Can't Feel My Face versus Stargirl interlude. Kind of a crazy matchup. What's up, you're watching Hive Mind, the most willful show on the internet. My name is Riley Zogan, and my able co-host, Graydon. Yeah, you're worth it. Today we're deciding once and for all what the best weekend song is. This is our... The, the Weekend Song Bracket. 64 songs by The Weekend, only one can win. Let us know your favorite song by The Weekend down in the comment section before we even start. Also, let us know which artist you want to see a bracket for next. Before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. HiveMindTV.com for our brand new merch. We also have a drop over on Cope's website that's linked in description, along with our Patreon and our Cameo if you'd like to support us. So click the join button here on YouTube and become a member. Thanks, members. We also have short form content over on TikTok and Instagram Reels. Follow us over there. Now, as always, for the first round, we're gonna hear a clip of the songs, and after that, we're just gonna play it out. Fair. All right, first matchup. Come on. Blinding Lights versus Popular. <laughs> Hot take. Hot take alert. Let's listen to it first. Okay, sorry. Ooh, I'm blinded by the lights. No. Now, this bracket is for the biggest artist in the world. Correct. And this is the most streamed song of all time. Yeah, it's a big song. Pretty big song. <laughs> Pretty big? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the biggest song ever. Soon to be surpassed by Rich Man from Richmond or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver Anthony? Yeah. You think he's, he's got a shot? He's coming for you, Abel. Listen, if you're five foot three and 300 pounds, taxes ought to not pay for those bags of fudge rounds. What? <laughs> Listen, yes, this song is overplayed by definition. Yeah. It's the biggest <laughs> song ever. But it's an amazing synth pop song. Oh, yeah, I can like, it's in my bones. It feels like it existed before it was made. Kind of, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it feels like, how did this song not already exist? Yeah. It's so good. If it comes on the radio, crank it. And I, I love the motion that it has in my brain. It's, ooh, I'm, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it very much, like, makes you just kind of, like. Kind of makes me want to do jazz hands, too. But I won't. They're banned on YouTube. Yeah. Begging on the knees to be popular. That's a dream to be popular. A few things I gotta say. I have a few things to say too. You go ahead first. <laughs> Madonna stuns a new selfie. Does not stun on this song. And let me say, money on top of me, money on top of her. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, like- If Madonna's uh, stinky old ass wasn't on this track, I'd be way more into it. I would like it a lot. <laughs> I love this song. I like it till it gets to her part. It's fine. She's 74. What's she doing on here? <laughs> what? That She's an icon. Oh, an icon, yeah. yeah. If Michael Jackson was alive, he'd be all over the weekend songs. I don't know, man. I like this song. Me it's too. not as good as Blinding Lights. No. It's not as important as Blinding Lights. I want to vote for popular, though. You're going to? Can I start off that hot? You can start off hot if you want to. Give me popular. I'm taking Blinding Lights, and Grant, as always, will be our tiebreaker. I'll take Blinding Lights. Thank you, Grant. <laughs> if he's that popular there, you would have stopped the video. <laughs> <laughs> now we got Party Monster versus Shameless. These two things I am. <laughs> as far as bangers go, this one is one of the best. Oh, not for me. Really? I don't know. It gets into that place of like the old sexy, creepy weekend, but when it's done with this production, I don't like it. Oh, I don't know. The drums on this song yeah. are insane. Like how it drops out and comes back with the like the... I mean, all of his songs have great structure. Yeah. Everything structurally is sound. I don't know. There's something about it. I like that it's nasty. Yeah. I mean, that's 95% <laughs> of the songs in here are going to be disgusting filth. And I'm going to continue to say I like that it's nasty. <laughs> I'm going to say too, I'm going to take it easy on them today. Yeah. You've been a weekend hater recently. I'm going to take it really easy on them. Okay. Then I'll divulge why later. I'll always be there for you, girl. I have no shame. Shit! Fantastic song. Awesome. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. It's creepy. <laughs> it's dirty. <laughs> it's got uh, the right sounds going on in the right places. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, I think there are days where I'd rather listen to Party Monster, but I think as a song, I respect Shameless more. Shameless? About time we agree on something. Jeez. It's the second match. Oh, <laughs> smokes. This feels so good to finally agree with you on something. All right, now we got gasoline versus love in the sky. Steaming hot take. Let's hear him though, first. Please, you spin me around so I can breathe. Okay. <laughs> Who knew he had this vibe in him? That's what I'm saying. You know? This album grew on me probably the most during yeah. this listening. And I love that track, man. <laughs> I love it. It oh. is awesome. It's so good. This is top three weekend album for me. It feels like an alter ego. It's like the first part of his career was like empty, weird trap houses. Uh -huh. And then he was like first floor VIP party. And then for this album, he's like, let's go to the basement and I'm going to try some stuff out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> this feels like he was doing normal cocaine his whole life. And then someone gave him something that was like 
lime green. And they were like, this is that new stuff. <laughs> and it's like Coke, but it's like alien Coke or something. And it took him to a different place. Do you want to try super cocaine? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like uranium. He's like, I love it when it goes to sleep. <laughs> the normal Coke stuff us normal people can relate to. Yeah. This I can't really relate to. I'm like, is this the past, the future? <laughs> Who is this man? <laughs> One of the better songs on Kissland for me. I think it's a great performance from him, and I get why people love this song so much, but it doesn't do as much for me as Gasoline does. No, I mean, this is like an ambitious, almost abstract kind of piece that I have little parts of it that I like, but Gasoline is just like, whoops, like I'm getting whipped in the ass, and I like it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Now tell your friends versus the birds part one. Oh, easiest one yet for me. Thank God. This is like the hardest one for me so far. Oh, I will. I'll make a good point for you. Go tell your friends. I'm a nigga with the hair singing about popping pills. Oh, that song. Enough. Let's hear the next one. Don't you fall in love. Don't make me make you fall in love. Thanks for choosing that clip that perfectly exemplifies why I hate that song. Why? The military drums. I don't need the drummer boy on there. It sounds so stupid. <laughs> 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 that just, song's such a classic, though. Up until the drums come in. I don't know. I still love that song. I respect you, and I respect that opinion, but if Tell Your Friends comes out at this point in the bracket, I'm going with it. Oh, no, I know. I'm not saying that it's better than Tell okay. Your Friends. I kind of feel like people sleep on just how good Tell Your Friends is. The Soul Dog sample? Ugh. Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> the most iconic line too. Don't believe the rumors, bitch, I'm still a user. Yeah, still a user oh. and took a selfie with me at my grandma's funeral. Oh yeah, about like his cousin. Yeah. Like, yeah, his cousin took a Cousin's selfie. Cousin's a groupie now trying to take selfies at my grandma's funeral. And I love that The weekend does a perfect thing in lyrically, does not linger on anything. No. Like that is like, it tells like a whole story in that one line. It doesn't talk about why that's sad. It doesn't no. talk about why that's like, he does a lot yeah. with a little, you know? Escape from LA versus coming down. Okay. I love this song. I get why everybody says it's a classic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so, so good. But it does suffer from the one thing that bothers me about The weekend, which is sometimes the delivery plus the lyrics gets a little bit weird. Yeah. Like the back half of this song when he's <clears> like, <throat> same work done on day face. Yeah, he's doing I don't something. criticize. <laughs> like it's just kind of like, you're talking about how girls have like plastic surgery yeah. and you're like, I don't criticize. Decide. Like, yeah. it's just like super whispery and it's like- It's strange. It's another classic like melodramatic banger though. And I always think of the movie, which is a great film as well. I always want you and I always want you that's just better though. This one is so even for me. Yeah, for me, it's like the D'Angelo like harmonies on Coming Down. I know early weekend super inspired by D'Angelo and even like the dream. You get like that weird adult drug using R&B. It's very drowsy and like atmospheric and that's yeah. what I love about the early weekend stuff. Escape from LA just feels so like big and important. Yeah. And I love like also narratively what that does for the weekend. Mm -hmm. I like that at the beginning of his career, he's saying like, Callie, that's the mission. Yeah. He's always wanted to be there. Now he's got to escape from LA. Yeah. Like he got too big. It's like, it's so important. Yeah. Both of these are important songs in his career. On a bare bones music level for me, I like coming down more. I'm going to go with escape from LA only to pin it on Grant. I'm going to take coming down. I only want you when I'm coming down. What a weird time to want someone too. That's usually when I want more drugs. Well, it's one of his vices, you know? Oh, it's not just about women. No, I mean, I think it is. Oh. Like he's addicted to sex. <laughs> oh, really? So, yeah, he's coming down from the drugs and he's like, what do I need if I don't have more drugs? Cooter. <laughs> Now we got Die For You versus Tears In The Rain. Yeah, kind of a tough one too. This is tough. Even though we're it and it makes you feel this is like one that in the first 30 seconds, I'm like, nope. And then halfway through the song, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. There's songs in this style in his career that I like less than this one. Sure. But it's definitely not my favorite type of weekend yeah. song. Like 
like Tears in the Rain more. I do too. Yeah. You could play this on a Halloween playlist and it'd fit right in with the monster mash and like chainsaw sounds. <laughs> he uses so many like horror screams on this project and stuff. It's so weird. It's a great closer too. Yeah. It's just so like, it's a perfect type of like end of album mm -hmm. song, you know? Probably my second favorite on that project. All right, now we got Try Me versus 28. Try me, try me. Once you put your pride aside, you can notify me. See, like when I first looked at this matchup, I definitely had an opinion. And then hearing that, I was kind of like, man, that song's good. It is. That song is really good. It's really good. This is on the bridge to the high production stuff that I don't like as much uh -huh. and still maintaining some of the early creepiness that I like. Like there's still weird sounds in here, yeah. but the bass is getting bigger. Like it's getting wider, more like a cinematic. It's got to be 28, though. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah, with all that being said. <laughs> yeah. I'm so good. I'm so good. How is he so good at writing songs so early? Yeah. Because I know he doesn't write everything for it. Like, Max Martin has a big sure. part in, like, his later career and stuff. Bob Dylan. But Bob Dylan? Bob Dylan ghost wrote a lot of... Uh, Star Boy. Really? Yeah. He, had, he had most of that album written, actually, before <laughs> The Weeknd was even born. But let me digress to a point you often make. When someone comes into their career, usually that's 20 years, let's say, of writing. Yeah. And then the first thing comes out. And then the next project, you know, is a year of writing. Totally, totally. And so those early albums, like Trilogy as a compilation, is his whole life up until that point. Yeah. And that character is what lives on for like even two, three more projects. I just think often with a with a pop star, the structure of song comes later. Yeah. And to me, it feels like he had such a handle on structure of songwriting that it, like, especially as somebody who was like heavily using drugs and homeless at, yeah. at certain points, it's yeah. like pretty amazing that yeah. he's able to craft these songs in this world and all that. Final counterpoint on my end sure he only became a pop star later he initially comes out as just this weird ambiguous r&b but he has songs like this that are just like i know like it's so well written yeah i'm gonna go 28 me too it's the age of my cat just will not give up 28 summers with that thing loved them all no 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 what's you got your cat last year oh it's yeah you've only had that cat for a year i didn't know it was that old why'd you buy it so old what? What you know sometimes to be true isn't what the heart says, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. Now we got often versus don't break my heart. Oh, I don't like this matchup. <laughs> and time. Broke the record. Really? Yeah, yeah, you actually got it. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. It's like 136 in one minute. Slips or slaps? It's a full extension of the tongue. It's nice. From, it's from top to bottom. Okay. Boom, boom. Yep. Like that. It's a lap. Oh, nice. We're going to yeah. do them in laps. Laps. Yeah, it's like what I say. That's why they call it lapping it up. I think I can go even faster. Hey, we'll try again tomorrow. Okay. Don't break my heart. Don't let me down. Both of these songs are like classics to me. Mm -hmm. I just think Don't Break Me Heart is... Mm, fuck. <laughs> don't break me heart. <laughs> don't break me heart. Oh, don't break me heart. Don't let me down. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, Don't Break Me Heart. <laughs> <laughs> He's Scottish. <laughs> He's a Scottish guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that song is just so underrated. Like it's one of the least streamed on Dawn FM mm -hmm. and people don't even like really talk about it. It's like full MJ bag. Yeah, it's good. And like I said earlier, I kind of learned to love Dawn FM, but this one still feels like bottom of the barrel. Not very bottom of the barrel, but it's right there in the bottom three songs for me off that project. Really? And often is like... <laughs> <laughs> right. White coat, bottle service, in the club, three-day bender. He's never rocking white, though. He's like a racist. He said that. I know, he did say that. So, yeah, yeah he's not wearing a white coat. Off-white coat. There you go. What happened? What happened to Virgil? <laughs> I, don't know. I do, actually. Yeah, I do. He privately died of a disease. <laughs> That's fair. Often is so, so good. Yes. I'm just going to, like, do my protest vote. Fine. Like, I'm voting for Ralph Nader here. So okay. I'm going to go with Don't Break My Heart. Grant, where are you lying? I'll take often. Protest all you want. It doesn't help shit. <laughs> Once again, another wasted vote at the polls. <laughs> all right, now the hills versus what you need. I only call you when it's outside. They had to like invent a new bass for that yeah. song. This song is one that is actually overplayed. Yes. Like I've heard it too much. Mm -hmm. But when I first heard it, I was like, 
whoa, he can do this? Yeah. And then he put Eminem on the remix. And Which was awesome, way. right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make a lot of cocaine jokes today. Sure. So I don't know if you wanna like put an advisory or something on the screen real quick, if you wanna like flash something. No, that's good, never mind. Oh. <laughs> the hills, not a lot of people know this, mm -hmm. could refer to little mounds of cocaine. Yeah. And I understand that wasn't much of a joke, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I'm working on it. Well, that's where the phrase run for the hills comes from. Right. Because when you need to really escape, you got to run for some hills of cocaine <laughs> and just kind of lose it. You know yeah, because I mean? real addicts don't bust out lines. No. Brother, bust me out a hill. <laughs> Fuck it. Make it a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That's a mole hill. Make that a mountain for me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to work down at it. Yeah. I put you on the floor. Love this atmosphere. The delivery kind of wanes for me at the end. It doesn't have a lot of replay value. Yeah. I love that it exists and mm -hmm. I, I really love the atmosphere. Like yes. I think it's like, it's even more drowsy than the other ones we're talking about. It's very, yeah. exists in its own world, but it's just like melodically not my favorite weekend performance. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I will, although it is overplayed, take the hills on this one. I will too. What you need is just like a great album cut. In yeah. the context of that, it's awesome. Touch me, don't feel me, you have to fuck with me, I'm the real me, I'm the weekend. <laughs> now we got Snow Child versus I Was Never There. This is an easy one for me. I know, and I think we're gonna disagree. Okay. One of the best, this type of song that he does later in his career. Maybe we won't disagree. Oh, no, yeah. This song is so good. I love it. It feels like a mechanical puzzle, like assembling itself as the song's going on or something. I'm gonna use a lot of visual language. Today yeah, too. I can tell. Yeah, yeah. I never thought of that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, I don't know, the way it fits together is beautiful. And Snow, here, yet another subtle reference to the white substance Abel loves so much. Cocaine. <laughs> wow, I never knew that. That Peruvian jumping powder. I had no idea. That Colombian disco stuff. I really, really thought it was about precipitation in a colder temperature than 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where you're wrong, brother. It's that Mexican talking bag. Muy bien. <laughs> <laughs> Good song. Good song. Again, I do like that era where you have these ambitious, strange kind of song structures with this bigger production. Yeah. But Snow Child is just wickedly good. Yeah, I like Snow Child more. I do like on I Was Never There, the production choices are interesting mm -hmm. for a ballad. Oh no. We've got Sacrifice versus Montreal. Easy for me. I'm sad it's hard for you. I don't wanna His biggest hit from Don FM era. In the top two maybe for me? Oh, on the album. Yeah. Really? Two or three. It's like middle of the road for me. I, I mean, it's a great pop song. It's like Don FM is a great album front to back to me. To me, it has like the same get up and go as Blinding Lights. Like I could always hear that and it has like the way that bass is syncopated is like Michael Jackson-esque. Yeah. It's just timeless. <laughs> Bilingual. I know, I know. It's oh. like the sleeper favorite too. A it's lot of people so like it. It's so good. It has such a knock to it. It's I like such it. An atmosphere. I like it more than Sacrifice. I would rather Sacrifice not exist than Montreal not exist. That's fair because there are a lot of great pop songs that kind of sound like Sacrifice, but I love it too much. Grant, it's up to you. I will take Sacrifice. That's my dog today, bro. Fair choice. I like that song. Pray for me versus real life. You won't pray for me. I will say, <laughs> when Kendrick comes in on that song, it's a little weird, doesn't like fit for me. But then once Kendrick starts singing with him, yeah. I love it. Me like too. I love the way their voices mesh actually like works so much better than it should. Mm -hmm. It's so good. I think it's a great collab. Anybody collabing with The Weeknd's kind of awkward coming in. Yeah. I feel like, cause he just sets a stage that is, I don't know, they're weird shoes to stand in. Except for one person who I will, I will mention that will come up later. Push them away. The whole beat has like a drag to it that he ties together and I love when he does that. I think I'm going pray for me. See, I don't know. I don't feel super strongly about either of these songs. Real life is kind of like not my favorite on Beauty Behind the Madness. It's yeah. kind of like one of my least favorite on the album. It just feels like that big like, you know, he does that a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's just leave it up to Grant. Okay. I'll take pray for me. All right. You go pray for me. Now we got House of Balloons slash Glass Table Girls versus How Do I Make You Love Me? 
a lot of words in this matchup. <laughs> yeah. Brand new tables, all glass and it's four feet wide. This song is one of my favorite examples of just like young nasally The Weeknd. Mm -hmm. It's just grittier. It's grittier, it's hypnotic, but like upon revisiting it, it's not great on my ears. Oh, I don't know. It, it's like my favorite. I think it's so cool. I love it as a piece. Like the, I think the two songs work really well together. Thank you, love See, like this to me is better than Sacrifice. Oh no. Not to me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. This one to me is just like, there's something about it. Yeah, it's weird. It sounds like Tron. <laughs> right? It sounds like space. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely super 80s inspired. Yeah. It lets itself go a little like glam and weird, but I, it's one of my favorites on Dawn FM. It's just something really cool about it, but I have to go House of Balloons. Like that's just such a classic. Yeah. Like I can't, there's no way. We're not choosing the campy 80s song over House of Balloons. Now call out my name versus scared to live scared to live Wait, you said that like it was not about the song no it wasn't yeah <laughs> just, just kind of a funny thing to say call out my name, call out my least favorite of the types of song, like this exact yes. type of song. Cause he has yeah. maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine, 25 of these <laughs> kinds of songs. And this one, it's too on the nose. Yeah, he's saying, call out my name. Boom, drop right there. It's got no drag, no like interesting composition to it. It's just like. It's also vocally harsh. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, it's like it, it like almost peaks yeah. on you. It's like too much. is so good at ballads in this era. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, I love this song. It reminds me of uh, one we cut out. True Colors? True Colors. Yeah. It's damn near sweet. It is sweet. If any other artist like made this song, you'd be like, that's a sweet little ballad. But when you hear him doing it, you're like, what's the angle? <laughs> <laughs> what's, who's the mark? <laughs> yeah. Is it about his dealer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, now we got Faith versus Secrets. God damn it. I hate this matchup. <laughs> Hard ass beat. Oh, that's a fan favorite too. It's yeah. like, and I see why. There's so many like elements to it. It's like a whole journey. It's really, really, really good. And it moves. It's just like a moving ass beat. And then he's just kind of like. And then it's just so like, it's like one of the darkest, yeah. truly emotional weekend songs. Like I get why people say it's the best song he's ever made. Cause it's just like, you don't feel anything as much as you feel the end of faith. Like the end of that song is crazy. Yeah. He wants her to OD with him. That's insane. Yeah. Honestly, going into this, I was like, ah, oh, whatever, corny pop song. Now it's one of my favorites. Yeah. It is so, <laughs> why, why is it so catchy? I thought it was stupid up until yesterday when I was vacuuming and it came on and I ran it back. Yeah. It's the only song in the whole playlist I ran back. I was like, when you're talking in your sleep. It's so good. I feel like my mom would love it. Yeah. I have to show my mom the song. Uh, you know? I will not show my mom the weekend. <laughs> she will get back into blow. <laughs> She's 50 years clean. The verses of this song remind me of MGMT. Like I can hear that, yeah. You know? And some of the synths remind me of like Tame Impala, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. He'll get a hold of a melody sometimes that he just knows is so catchy and it just keeps hitting you at the right spot. He waits long enough to give it to you again. Then when you get it, it's like, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. I have to go Faith here though. It's just too important of a song. I won't. You're gonna go Secrets. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. I, I respect it. I think like if we did this bracket a week ago and I hadn't listened as much, I would have been like, what the fuck is wrong with you picking secrets over faith? But right now I get it, yeah. but I'm still going faith. Yeah. Grant? I am going faith. There goes my dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one on the first side, we got Wicked Games versus Wasted Times. Signature W matchup. You know what's up? Ow. <laughs> Give me all of it. This song feels like, uh, uh like, no, 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 you shouldn't be able to listen to it. Yeah. It feels like cheating on your neighbor's wife. Not even your wife, and you feel like you're cheating on her. Something, <laughs> yeah, something about it feels all sorts of wrong. It's depraved. It's yeah. awesome. Wicked. Not about that either. It's not about the play. No. I, a lot yeah. of people think it is. A lot of people think that this song is about the play Wicked. Or inspired by it, or his audition for it. There's nothing to do with it whatsoever. If anything, I would think Popular might have something to do with Wicked. Yeah. Popular. <laughs> 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 Love 
love the production on this one. It is so fun. It's like freaky drill dance. I was listening to it yesterday and I was like, if you speed this up, it's a Jersey Club song. I love it, but I can't, you know, it's Wicked Games, but I will. Wickedly talented. I will tip my cap. Wasted times, high school, college. At the time I worked at the circus bar. At the time I got willingly stuck in a traffic jam under my favorite bridge. We really don't have time um, for you to list all of your wasted times because it's going to be spending like... Spending time with my father as a kid. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Hello. All the minor league sporting oh. events I've been to. Why? <laughs> okay, Hello. now you're doing a double meaning. Now you're just... Okay. Those are wasted times. Oh, I thought you were saying... Because you said high school and college and then when you worked at the circus bar. Yeah. Those were all times that you were wasted. And yeah. so I didn't know if you meant it was a waste of time. Or, That's what I mean. Oh, because also spending time with your dad growing up. Drunk. Drunk, yeah. But a waste of time. Yeah, okay, cool. Volunteering at the children's hospital. Also drunk. <laughs> drunk and boring. Yeah. Holy smokes. <laughs> Volunteering at the animal children's hospital. Drunk. Yeah. Very drunk. They all died anyway. So I was like, why was I there? <laughs> Joining the Marines. Hello. Didn't get any stronger or hotter. Um, only more yeah. conservative. That was a big waste of time. Painting my grandma's house. She died soon after. What was the point? She uh, also didn't want a mural. I know. I don't know why. She just wanted it painted like a solid color. I didn't think the bitch could still see. Okay, don't call her a bitch. I mean, I mean <laughs> she wasn't the nicest lady, but the, I mean, I only met her when she was like 90. She like, killed four people. You've killed way more than four people. I'm a man. Whatever. She didn't want a mural in her house. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Those are some of the wasted times. Oh, right now. <laughs> that was another wasted time. You're just drunk. I feel like this is actually worth it for us to do. <laughs> whatever, man. It was like all the <laughs> wicked games. Okay. Second side. Starboy versus Here We Go Again. Now here we go. Here we go. Here we go again. Were you an okay go? <laughs> yeah, I was. Here it goes. Here, here it goes, goes. Here it goes, goes again. again. Oh, now here it goes again. Are they British or not? Because I think we just did it with a British accent, and it's they're not British, but they should be. They probably aren't British because that music video is so inventive and groundbreaking. I don't think British people are that smart. They sound smart. Right. It's, it's a big... It's a, it's a trick. Yeah, it's a trick. <laughs> Another moment in his career where I was like, oh, he can do this? Yeah, I mean, anybody that gets Daft Punk involved. But I don't love this as a song necessarily. Yeah, I feel that. It's not my favorite of those big hits from that era. Ooh, here we go again. Featuring Tyler the Creator. Sound like a Bruno Mars song. Yeah, it does. We still celebrate in Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Bruno loves the Super Bowl. Yeah, he loves it. He played the Super Bowl and he's played it many times, actually. <laughs> he loves yeah, it, too. He loves it, yeah. yeah. He couldn't make it as a running back. That's why. It's way too short. Tell uh, Cowboys new running back that. How short is he? Five, five. Oh my God, he's going to run through their legs. I think his name's like Deuce Vaughn or something. He's literally a little pipsqueak. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And he is quick. They're going to toss him around like a rag doll. This is like my least favorite matchup yet. I couldn't care less about either song, really. The Daft Punk aspect is what's going to take Starboy over the edge for me. I could go either way on this one. I do like Here We Go Again. It's not one of my favorites on Dawn FM, though. It's kind of bottom half of the album yeah. for me. I'll go Starboy, though. Yeah. It's, it's got it's still, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good song. Now we've got Kiss Land versus Savior tears. Now we're back into tough matchups. Yeah, this is a tough one. You can meet me in the room with the kisses saying free. You gotta pay. Okay, don't touch me. Bro. Oh. I'm not gonna pay with my body. <laughs> well, that's what you gotta pay with. I know, but I'm not going to. Do you guys take Apple Pay or can you just... I don't know, scan this. <laughs> <laughs> I know the kisses aren't free. <laughs> Forgot my wallet at home. <laughs> the second half of this song is unbelievable though. Like one of my favorite moments in his entire career. Best song on that project too. This one I do really like, but ventures into some corny instrumentation. It feels like a new wave track or something, or like Tears for Fears. But not as like cool. Right, because yeah. it wasn't happening then and he's not whoever the Tears for Fears guy was, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. He dips into a couple different 80s bags, and for me, the timeless Michael Jackson kind of Quincy-esque stuff is what I tend to like more, and then the other stuff is fun at times, but then overall, kind of how we view that era of music anyway. There's only like a few that come out of there that are like really good. I go Kissland. I go Kissy 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 too. All right, now we got Take My Breath versus Reminder. I'm gonna need a reminder of what Reminder sounds like. I'm trying to find that blue asshole. Oh, there you go. <laughs> See, <laughs> this one is like an incredible band is playing and there's no lead singer. Like that's how I imagine it. Uh -huh. And he just like walks up yeah. and kills it. They're like, our yeah. singer couldn't make it. He's like, they're like, he can sing. 
Because <laughs> it's just such like a classic groove. Mm-hmm. Can it take my breath? And he just goes, I don't know. There's something really like flashy and mm. cool about this song. I love when he does those like abbreviated melodies. Da, 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 da. Like yeah. it ends real quick like that. Oh, it's just so, it's so saucy. Every time you try to forget who I am, I'll be right there to remind you again. All that like, yeah. it's got like the record scratch shit to it. This is like definitely one of his most stylish big bangers too. Mm-hmm. And I do feel like it could get slept on. It's kind of one of the creepier songs on Starboy too, which I like about it. Yeah. It maintains that like OG persona of his, but I mean, Take My Breath is like a disco track. I'm not gonna turn my back on disco now after all these years, <laughs> after all it's done for me and my family. My dad was in Earth, Wind and Fire. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. He was into Earth, Wind and Fire. He wasn't in Toto either. And he was in The Village People. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. He was a construction worker. Yes, he was. I think I go Reminder here. I'm sorry, I don't know. I think Reminder is just, it's cooler. Like, oh, they're both so good. Grant? Yeah, I'll take take my breath. Okay. High for this versus Privilege. You wanna be high for this. What? <laughs> Where he's about to go yeah. is a crazy place. Yeah. This song does not get talked about enough as like one of the best songs on House of Balloons. Like it is crazy. Yeah. And it sets the stage perfectly. Yeah. You know, it's like the greatest opener of all time. And I love that bass, that like sawtooth bass comes through. And it literally is the feeling your jaw would get, or as people describe, they get when you're on a bunch of cocaine. Yeah. On the good stuff. That's what people say. You wouldn't know? Me? Yeah. You're saying it like as if you like that's what people say, but yeah. you have no you have no experience with that. That doesn't really affect me like that. I've done plenty of it, but I don't really get any of the side effects. Oh, really? Yeah. Only the good stuff. Only the good stuff. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good for you, man. My doctor says it's good for me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My doctor told me it was reverse vegetables. <laughs> what? That's what he said. He was like, "Have you been eating vegetables?" And I said, "No, I've been doing cocaine." And he said, "That's like reverse vegetables." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Either way, I like reverse vegetables more than vegetables, I guess. Way more. I'll take a steak with a lime. <laughs> I mean, right. <laughs> this broccoli out of here. And I got two what like a chord progression there. This is so fucking sultry and cool. I've gained a lot of respect for this song yeah. through listening. I was like, damn. Sometimes the slow burning songs, I just like, if they don't hit me right away, I don't come back to them. Mm-hmm. And having to come back to this song, I was like, wow. It's really good. Two red pills to take the blues away. Oh, shit. That's a Matrix reference. What? It's a Matrix reference. No, he's talking about Super Viagras. No. When, yeah, the Super Viagras are red and normal Viagras are blue. So he takes two red pills and now he doesn't need to use the blues anymore because the red ones are super. I don't think so. I think he's taking two red pills in the Matrix. Okay. To take going? the blues away, which is like a type of music. Because if you take two red pills in the Matrix, it's the same as real life, but blues never existed. Really? I don't remember Morbius saying that. In the movie. Morbius is not in it. <laughs> He's the guy with the little glasses. No, his name is not Morbius. Yes, man. it is. He got his spinoff movie last year. He's a clock doctor. Or a, he works on clocks. It's like a watch guy. I mean, yeah, the plot of The Matrix is kind of amorphous, but it's... <laughs> Either way, I believe it is a Matrix reference, and Muddy Waters would not exist if you took two red pills. It's a Viagra reference, and I'll die on that hill. Is that a hill? Like, <laughs> you <laughs> crush <laughs> it up? <laughs> Whatever. I got. We're going high for this. Yeah, high for this. Sorry, privileged white guys. No more privilege here. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry, guys. You have to check your privilege at the door, okay? Because it's not getting into the second round. Talk to him. Okay. Actually, I, can I bring mine? <laughs> Just mine. Fine. But don't you. tell anybody else, because then I have to let everybody bring I know, thank you. Yeah. After Hours versus Hurt You. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, where are you now when I need you more? God, what a song. That slap. <laughs> I was not hip to how good this song was before yeah. we did this bracket. Where were you now when I needed you? <laughs> That's not a great, like... I'm not capturing the vibe, but right. it's stuck in my head. So. Yeah. I haven't been to an after hours in a long time. Ouch. 
This is a lot of weight to put on a man. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of weight. I haven't been out in a long time. I know you're you're cuffed up, kind of living that life as a little domestic. I'm just saying, I'm putting that weight of like now you got to be the guy who takes me out. I don't go to the after hours either. <laughs> Jeez, I sure haven't been out to a crazy evening in a while, like all night long. Anything I want at my service, you know, I haven't had one of those nights in a really long time. I know I don't really go out though, man. I'm I stay in and edit the videos, and I'm really had the time of my life recently. You know what I mean? Like, Why, I is this had... my fault? Are you making it sound like it's my fault? Oh, what? No, I'm just saying if I don't have that soon, yeah, it is your fault. What? Just take me out dancing. It doesn't sound like my job. Give me drugs all night. Give you? Take me home in a nice Uber. Tuck me in. Give me a glass of water. I I don't. I don't. I mean. Give me 400 bucks to gamble with or something. This is a lot to ask of somebody. It's just a night out. I just haven't had a night like that in a while. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I think. Okay. Really good song. Yeah, it's good. It's not as good as After Hours, though. It's not, but he's pushing a register there that even for him is high. Yeah. That's crazy. How is he doing that? Probably technology, man. Does he have classical, like, vocal training? I don't know. I think probably now. I'm sure he's gotten, like, a vocal coach and all is that Is he low-key an angel? <laughs> Something like that? What was that little dance? Is he low-key an archangel? I'm trying to make TikTok trends happen still. Yeah, sure. I'll keep adding to it. That's the same as before. Oh. You said you were going to keep adding. To <laughs> no, it. not right now. Oh, okay. Like once it catches on, then I'll add something to it. Same dance plus. That catches on. Same dance plus plus. And then maybe I'll go minus minus. Minus minus. Reduce it down to just. <laughs> <laughs> it's, wow. It's reductive art. You know what I mean? Yeah. First the artist adds a lot, and then you take everything away from them. You leave them with a black dot on a piece of white paper, yeah. billion bucks, <laughs> ship it, sell it, and then burn it in front of them. Yeah, that's, You get what I'm talking about. I get it, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. It's yeah. awesome, right? Yeah. It's all about the plan. Doing the art is a fraction of what art's about. No. It's a lifestyle. It's a mindset. self-destruction. It's creating a false narrative about your life. What? Selling that as a belief for people. Creating TikTok dance, kind of cult, teetering on cult, and then piece of paper, black dot, billion bucks, light it on fire. After hours? Yes. <laughs> All right, now we got the morning versus sidewalks. Who's that, John Mayer in the background? <laughs> I don't know who's in the background, but <laughs> God, the singing, just the. Oh, 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 it's it's crazy. awesome. That's one of my favorites. God, that song is good. Don't cry, bro. It's okay. It's just good. Kind of me versus the sidewalks in the morning, you know what I mean? Boom! <laughs> I'm always falling out. <laughs> I'm always tripping on it. It's kind of me versus the sidewalks in the morning. I know. Yeah, I, I heard you. Because <laughs> the I way heard... I, I'm falling on, I'm, they're, they're winning. Sidewalks are winning. Sometimes the slab gets raised up over the other one. Uh, You'd yeah. be walking on the phone, you stub your toe. <laughs> Most people don't trip, they stumble. Me, though. Doing. <laughs> sidewalks in my life. Seems like he just found autotune and wanted to have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, and he did. Kendrick verse, very good. It is very it's good. A very, Kendrick very verse. good Kendrick verse. It is not better than the morning. No. And I'm not usually a morning person. Crack at dawn. Yeah. I saw Dawn's crack once at a truck stop. Dawn, your old neighbor? Yeah. She's driving big rig now. Ah, uh, really? Yep. Good for her. Huge ass butt crack sticking out of the gas pump. <laughs> and it happens, you know. I said, Dawn, how the hell you been? Didn't mention the crack. God, no. Oh, okay. You never say that to someone when their big old butt cracks out in public. If you're really close to them, like if you you have a good relationship with them, you can kind of go, hey, listen, <laughs> your crack's sticking out a little bit, okay? You got something stuck in your teeth and your butt crack is showing. I'm doing this for you because I don't want you to go the rest of the day and have yourself be embarrassed, everybody around town talking about you. I'm sure that bit was good, but this shirt is old and I was nervous that whole time you were holding it that the seams were just going to... That would have been good for views. It's the morning. Morning. Party in the after party versus alone again. Oh, this is actually tough. Yeah, it's not the easiest one. Wow, a classic. Big ass snare drum. Cold ass delivery here. That's what I'm talking about with the ballads from this era. He just sauces them up so crazy. This is like kind of a ballad, but it also has like the... Memphis kind of yeah. like rap thing to it. It's like weird. Like kind of sound like a blade song. Yeah. 
It's strange. <laughs> I think I prefer Alone Again. I think I do too. It's a weird, because the party and the after party is so good. It's so it's classic. Iconic too, it's, yeah. like, it's like an amazing song. I just think Alone Again is just, there's something really special about it. Let's piss them off with our love. Yet again. Alone again? The world is against us. All right, we got I Feel It Coming versus Life of the Party. Mm. Oh, I think I'm gonna piss some people off here. Okay. I feel it coming. See, where Starboy felt like Daft Punk was there, but like in the details, mm -hmm. Daft Punk is like right up on stage yes. with him on this one. This is like one of my favorite weekend hits of all time. Me too. I think if I hadn't heard it so much, it would be like top five weekend song for me. It's mm -hmm. just like a little bit overplayed. Sure. But like, I love this song. I do too. And I can't help from thinking nasty, but it's the way I am. It's the way I'm built. Sure. But I still love it nonetheless. nonetheless. Oh, you went like, I feel it coming like in like a dick way. Or, Oh, you feel the other person coming. Right. I feel it coming. <laughs> and it's like, I feel it coming. And you're almost like celebrating. Right. <laughs> like, I did that. <laughs> well, she did that as well. Correct. It's not just you doing that. She's woman on that. top. Have you heard about that? Yeah. Very crazy. <laughs> Have <laughs> I heard about it? What do you mean? It's possible. I mean, like, it can happen. Woman on top. It looks like one of like the classic. Like, what do you mean? That's woman on top backwards. Bet you never heard of that one. I've I've heard of that. Yeah. These are all very like basic sex positions. You're I've only ever done man on top between legs, and now I've tried woman on top and woman on top backwards. <laughs> Game changer. I, it's kind of just like up to. Her. You were saying she did it too. Yeah. She can do her thing. You know what I mean? Right. Let her go. Wow. Buck wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah, instead of just me, yeah, on top in between legs. What you're saying, <laughs> what you're saying is that you've had very vanilla sex all these years, and you just found out what two of the other most standard sex positions are. Is that correct? The fuck does vanilla mean in this context? <laughs> Means like really basic, normal, kind of like no edge to it. I mean, if you think man on top in between legs, legs wrapped around man is basic and normal, I guess. I guess I'd call that a little more French vanilla if you catch my drift. That's how I'd be kissing during sex too. I open up my mouth and use my tongue a lot. That's a lot of people. A lot of people do that. I would say your tongue motion was very odd there, but. Sometimes woman on top, man will crunch up. <laughs> And give hug. Yeah. So it's like woman on top still inside, man, crunched up hug. <laughs> That's like really intimate. It's it's it is super intimate. Yeah, but it's like normal. You are like right there with your lover in the moment, inside. <laughs> wow. Game changer, man. You know what? <laughs> Keep changing the game, man, because you got a lot of game to change left. Yeah. You were really only doing a scrimmage before. It seems okay. like. Yeah. Wait till you hear about man with gag ball and stuff inside of him. That's okay. another that one. one is, try. Yeah, that one's. That yeah. Was, how did you try that one? Man plugged okay. into outlet. Blew a fuse in the house. Hello. <laughs> I got metal in my arm. Didn't realize it would backfire like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's that little nasally voice you like. <laughs> I like the nasally voice, and I like that this sounds like a fucking circus or something. Yeah. But I've never really understood why people consider this one of the best weekend songs. It's a classic, but it's like, it's not that fun to listen to. It just never hit me at the right time, and now I'm only ever trying to like rediscover it. Yeah. And I'm only just like looking at artifacts from a lost civilization. None of it makes sense. I respect that it's creative. Me it too. feels super different for him, even at that time. Mm -hmm. But it's not a song I go back to and actually listen to all the time yeah. and I just that's why I have to go with I feel it coming Yeah, and I know that makes me a basic ass bitch okay I know that makes me a north face ug wearing latte sipping white broad from the midwest but sometimes the bigger song is just a little better for me I'm just picturing you and Uggs man it's cute can't feel my face versus stargirl interlude kind of a crazy matchup I can't feel my face when I'm with you but I love when I first heard this song, I didn't even think it was The weekend. Yeah, this was a big pivotal point in his career. I love this song though. It holds like a lot of the same magic I felt it had when I first heard it. Same. And again, with the good stuff, it'll have a numbing effect in your sinuses. You're talking about that chitter chatter chowder? Yeah. That old school Jamaican jumping juice. That Nicaraguan nostril topping. I mean, I'm talking fluorescent Floridian fancy feast. Those South American stripper pole snowflakes. Yeah. I, I, I got it. I got it now. Yeah. It took me a second, but I think I got there. Right. And that'll numb your face out, huh? Absolutely. You could do surgery on it. <laughs> <sighs> the 
That register is a crazy one for Lana. Doesn't make sense. And this is who I was talking about, who has great chemistry with oh. The Weeknd as a feature artist. Because yeah. also Lana does like some extra kind of background vocal stuff mm -hmm. on Starboy, like throughout the album. And this is, I mean, it's an interlude, but it's so good. Like it is, yeah. I, I get why people really love this one. And I do wish it was a, like became a real song. But what I love the most about it is like when you hear Lana's part, you kind of can't imagine what The Weeknd's going to do. And he picks like a really interesting, Interesting melody yeah. that works so well with it. This is one that I listen to, and then I listen to it right like again yeah. right away. You know, I've heard folks say it's the best song on Starboy. Yeah, people <laughs> say it. I think it's a beautiful feature. I think they are awesome together. It's not as good as Can't Feel My Face though. Yeah, I kind of have to give it to Can't Feel My Face for being a very complete, perfect pop song. Whereas Stargirl Interlude is like a great moment, but yeah. it is a minute long. You yeah. know, King of the Fall versus Heartless. Maybe you know just what I like. Makes me want to sit backwards on a chair, dump water on my head. You know oh, what I mean? like, yeah, do like a routine. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Whole routine. Kind of like in an alleyway set. Yeah. Spotlight. I've really grown to love this song. It wasn't even really on my radar until we started listening for this bracket, and I absolutely love it. It's like one of the harder hitting, kind of swaggy approaches that I leave being like, oh, I really like that. I mean, it's a return to form song. Yeah. There's a lot of people were like, oh, The Weeknd's back doing this, because like mm -hmm. he hadn't done it in a minute. He was doing just big pop songs. Yeah. This is a lot of the swagger he had mm -hmm. in those earlier days. As a lot of like standout lyrics too. Heartless is kind of one of like the bottom half songs on After Hours for me. It's it's good. It I, is. Every song on that album is great. There's no like real duds on that album for me. This one just like isn't my favorite. I like King of the Fall more. Me too. I got Loft Music versus Acquainted. Oh fuck, both of these songs are really good. I just thought about it. One of these songs I do not like. Filmed independent, us against the city. Please don't get offended when we don't answer your calls. This is the Fire. best best nasally voice weekend. Yes. The, the, whatever that is, is that a sample? I don't, yeah. Yeah, that. That, shit, that shit's crazy. I mean, this is top three on House of Balloons for me. Love it, love it, love it. Learn to love it even more as I grow into a bit of a psycho man myself. A psycho, yeah. I was going to say psychosexual. Psychosexual drug addict. <laughs> right, sure. Money man. When right. I grow into a bit more of that myself, I find myself understanding the person at the core of drugs like this. All right. Do you have, are you holding? No, I don't now? have anything, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. <sighs> You it's haven't light. done, right. you haven't done drugs in a long time. Like, I know, and it's starting to catch up to me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but this is like somebody who does them all the time that needs them. You it's extended withdrawals because I was doing that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. I got you touching on your body. Touching on your body. I got you touching on your body. Oh, hey, what? <laughs> oh, what? Oh, what the hell? Dude, we're listening to explicit music. I can do that. It's not like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was just a little much. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. So you don't like this song, huh? Yeah, no, I don't. I, I don't mean, like the hook. That's fine. I, I like this song, but I like Loft music much more. All right, now we got Out of Time versus The Zone. Let's go. Which is a boxing website. Hey, I love you, girl, but I'm out of time. This is a different bag for him, and he made a hit. One of my favorites, like top handful on, on this project. On yeah. Don FM, yeah. yeah. Jim Carrey at the end of it is mm -hmm. like so perfect, you know? Yeah, God, and he's such a freak too. Yeah, Jim Carrey. <laughs> Lost his marbles. He's a real black dot on a white piece of paper sort of MF. But now he's like painting more like a purple gorilla with a machine gun and the American flag with a dollar sign instead of stars on it. Or it's like a caricature of George W. Bush like running over the two towers yeah. in like a Tonka truck. You know? <laughs> it says only fans in the corner. You're yeah. like, what's going on here, Jim? <laughs> Shit, I did all of that on my own. I'm gonna touch you all. Amazing vocal performance by him on that. Don't necessarily love the Drake verse. It's like a big Sean verse, basically. Yeah. It's one of the ones that's aged the worst from that era. Yeah, I totally agree. Out of time. Bigly. Now we got Less Than Zero versus In Your Eyes. Oh, kind of tough. Oh. These two albums going up against each other is tough. I can't get it out of my eyes. 
This is almost like that other 80s bag that I don't like a lot of times, but he hit on this one. Yeah, this one feels cleaner than I thought he would ever get. Yeah. It sounds like a movie soundtrack. Mm -hmm. It sounds like parents probably like this song a lot. <laughs> and I know a lot of Weekend fans say this is the best song on Dawn FM. It's good. It's very well written. It's great delivery, all yeah. that. It just doesn't have any edge whatsoever. No, he's very sanitized. You're like, oh, what'd they do to my guy? And he comes out like, Hello. <laughs> yeah, really. They lobotomized him. They, exactly, yeah. yeah. But it's very good. And like, I don't know, there's certain songs of his you just kind of have to take out of context. And I've been a general hater for so long. Yeah. But like looking at the whole body of work, there are songs here that will live outside of his persona and just live on as like really good piece of pop music. And that's just one of these. You know? Yeah. That song is so good. The the saxophones at the end. I wish he did have more horns. Yeah. I'd like to hear him do like a full big band album. I, I would love to hear that. Yeah. Doing like some Cab Calloway, but sexy. Not to say Cab wasn't sexy. I'm going less than zero. I'm going in your eyes. I don't, I mean, less than zero, it is. It's just too clean. Like, too clean. In your eyes is awesome. I love the instrumentation. You ever gotten piss in your eyes? Should we have Grant decide before? Or like you're, it sounds like you're asking me to tell a story. Just asking if you've ever gotten piss in your eyes. Probably, by accident. Like off a splashback? Yeah, I think so, probably. Wow, stings, don't it? Wrigley Field, they have the troughs out. Bounced right back. The guy next to you or you? It was mine. Oh, okay. good. It was mine. Yeah. Nobody was anywhere near me. I am too afraid to piss near people. Really? Yeah. Be fright. Be fright. Mm -hmm. I used to have it. I don't have it anymore, but I, I really, <laughs> you know... Thanks. Good. <laughs> therapy. Yeah. I don't, I didn't go to therapy. I just like got older and realized nobody's really trying to see my dick that much. Well, not just nobody in that bathroom. Yeah. Cool. Grant, what's your decision here? In your eyes. Thank you, Grant. In the night versus is there someone else? In the night she gives it calling. In the night she... I thought this was a Michael Jackson song when it I is. first heard it. It really is. <laughs> like, it's got the same bass. And he's even doing, like, MJ always wrote from the perspective of, like, the lonely dancer out at the club. Like, you know, he could do the narrator thing better yeah. than The Weeknd ever did, I feel like. He's always writing from a personal perspective. It's just MJ worship tune here. How just staccato he yeah. is on the verses and then lets it be big in the hook is very much Michael Jackson. But and the way he bought, like, a whole carnival mansion house. Did he do that? And, like, had kids over. I don't think that The weekend did that. Called it Neverland Ranch 2.0. He didn't do that. <laughs> Charged admission, even for the sick kids. I don't think that the- that, that Worked closely with Quincy Jones. <laughs> he might have, I don't- Hello, I mean, it's right there in front of you, people. Open him up. Had a sister named Janet. Hey! Oh, is this someone else or not? I feel like this is a really good like tonic song on that album. Yes. It has like a really good like down tempo melody. Kind of calms you down from the 80s whip that you're getting like lashed with the whole time. Yeah. In a good way. But yeah, it doesn't have the explosiveness of In the Night. I'd rather listen to Is There Someone Else. I understand that's unpopular. People really like In the Night. Mm -hmm. It's just a Michael Jackson song to me. Like it's just like whatever. I'm standing my ground. I like In the Night more. Grant? Is There Someone Else? Hey, that's oh, fair. okay. I'm that's surprised fair. by that actually. You could just listen to Thriller. Now we got DD versus Hardest to Love. And it's not coming back because he's sleeping with me. I mean, this is just a Michael Jackson song. It's almost like spot on. Yeah. And then he did the moonwalk during his first performance of it. Ugh. Wore a sequence suit, grabbed the old C. Dangled his kid out of the window during halftime. Put him in a little mask. Named it Butterfly Jones or whatever. Had a close personal relationship with Macaulay Culkin from the Home Alone movies. Meow. Ow. Your rings make that really difficult. It hurts. It's my bad, dude. It will not happen again. Goddamn DMB track. I didn't even realize he was doing that. Right. When I first listened to this album that didn't register to me, I wasn't like, oh, drum and bass is back. It's awesome. I love that song. It's so good. Yeah. That melody, like, how did you think of that being a DMB track? Like, it feels like it could have easily been one of his ballads, just like a normal, like, I've been the hardest to love, mm -hmm. you know? But instead, he just got, I killed that. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. I just nailed it. <laughs> I killed it like a dog it. in the street. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. And then he just like 
slaps that DNB on it, lets yeah. it have this like propulsive rhythm. Dirty Diana is way more important in the weekend's like career, but it's a Michael Jackson cover. And Hardest to Love is one of my favorite After Hours songs. Yeah, if Michael Jackson did DNB, maybe I'd like DD more. Right. DNB greater than DD in our books. I think that's going to be our biggest upset. Get the firearms out. Don't tell them to get them. No, I'm saying for us, we got to defend ourselves against these crazed lunatics. Right, there are a lot of crazy people who watch us. And last one in the first round, we've got Earned It versus Losers. <sighs> cool. <laughs> hey, you wanted a weekend bracket and you earned it, losers. Girl, you're perfect. Girl, you're perfect. You're always worth it. Always worth it. This reminds me of that book. Fifty Shades of Graydon. <laughs> hey, <laughs> ho, ho. Hey, ha. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yep! <laughs> right there! You wanna come into my pleasure room? No, I'm good. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> just chill out here. And you're qualified! <laughs> I will say, I kind of like Losers. Me too. As a song. But it does kind of sound like the drops in songs that were like, for some reason, called rock songs in 2014. Yeah. The rock radio would all of a sudden have these like almost EDM yeah. sort of drops in them, but they were really sanitized yeah. and had like a few guitars in there maybe. I don't know. There's something just like very kind of like vanilla about that instrumentation. Yeah. It doesn't have much edge to it. No, and I like hearing his voice kind of in that atmosphere, but Labyrinth is always like a little too cheeky for me. This one's kind of tough for me because I think Earned It is also a little middle of the road. Like I like it. It, but like I like often way more and it's like they feel like kind of spiritually connected for me earned it's just at like a pivotal point in his career where that's like a motion picture soundtrack banger for like the dirtiest, most depraved movie too. I mean, I see that, but that's just more like contextual. I think sure, like the yeah. song itself, I like earned it more, but like barely. Yeah. I think as time goes on though, Losers is gonna seem more and more corny though too. Yeah. First round's over. Let us know what we missed. Let us know any songs that should have been in there. Now let's get to the second round. Blinding Lights versus Shameless. And let's hear a clip of both of them, Riley. Nope, that's a, we don't do that in this round. I mean, from you. Let's hear you sing both of them. <sighs> Fine. Ooh, I'm blinded by the light. That's good. Okay, and shameless. Ooh, who's gonna fuck you like me? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, for me, it's pretty clearly Blinding Lights, the biggest song of all time, deservingly so. Begging me to come over. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> it's good, but like, ah, ah, woo. <laughs> I think I like Shameless more than I like Blinding Lights. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, it doesn't look like you believe it when you <laughs> say it. I don't know what I believe. Grant. Blinding what? lights. Okay. <laughs> My dog. <laughs> Got him back. Gasoline versus tell your friends. Tell your friends. It's so good, but gasoline is like. It's great. I wish it did not have to go out in the second round. Yeah, it'd be nice to get it to Sweet 16. Seems like we're all getting rid of gasoline these days with all these electric cars. And what, what happens when you want to go on a four hour road trip, then what? You gotta charge it half an hour and a half in. And what if there's not a charger? Do you ever think about the terror that one must feel when they're searching for something to charge their car <laughs> and then they're stranded on the side of the road, get stabbed by a hippie? I mean, I don't know where this society is heading, but I don't even know if I wanna go with it. <laughs> I want a nuclear powered car. Me too. Kim Jong? All right, coming down versus tears in the rain. Coming down. I think it's tears in the rain for me. I might too. <laughs> no. I'm gonna stick with coming down. All right, Grant. I will take tears. Very political over there by Grant. He's trying to keep us both happy. And that's not easy. Remember that threesome we had? Yeah. Both of us left super disappointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mostly because I had to look right into your penis. I didn't like do I didn't want to do that. Nah. It's one of my conditions going into it. Eh? I said I don't want to look down the barrel of his penis. <laughs> and nobody made you do that. I know. You just couldn't help yourself but moment. look. It was kind of like a, you die if you look in Medusa's eyes. Uh-huh. And I kind of wanted to die in that moment. Our channel is special because we tell a lot of lies on the channel, and a lot of people know when we're doing bits and stuff, and then you can tell when a story is real, and that one I feel like people can tell actually happened. Staring down the barrel of my co-host dick. <laughs> it's a Shine Down reference. 28 versus Often. I like 28 more. Ah, uh, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I do too. All right, The Hills versus Snow Child. For me, it's Snow Child. It's Snow Child for me too. The Hills is great and like kind of a revolutionary. Like I feel like yeah. it definitely changed the way that The weekend could operate. And it's so big. Like I think if I heard it live, I'd be more excited when The Hills yeah. came on because it's just so like cinematic and huge. But in the back of my brain, Snow Child is a better song. Agreed. All right, Sacrifice versus Pray For Me. I think easily Sacrifice. Yeah, Pray For Me is kind of tired. Now we've got House of Balloons slash 
slash glass table girls versus scared to live. We'll probably disagree here. I think it's scared to live for me. I think it's really close because scared to live is a little underrated, but I go house of balloons, glass table girls. Yeah. G. Balloons. All right. Faith versus wicked games. It's wicked games for me. This is like a final four matchup it though. Is. Like faith is so so good, but you can't beat Wicked Games. You I don't can't. think, I don't think you can beat it. Oh shit, that's tough though. I go Wicked Games here. Second side, Starboy versus Kissland. Strange matchup. Two very different people here, but alas, it's the same man. <laughs> um, huh. I guess. Wow. The dichotomy, the juxtaposition. Right. I go Kissland. Yeah, I go Kissland easily. Take my breath versus high for this. You wanna be high for this. Is that your pick or are you just like singing it? Oh, you didn't like it? No, I liked it. I just didn't know if that was your selection. You wanna be, huh? you wanna. <sighs> yeah, no, I'd choose it. Mm, it's close. That to me is the where the F would we be if it didn't exist. It's like his intro to him. Yeah, yeah, you're right. High for this wins, but I just think, I was just thinking about yeah. the groove on Take Your Breath. For it's a awesome. All right, After Hours versus The Morning. Oh shit. Yeah, this one's tough. I don't know. Tell me something to believe in. I think The Morning is my favorite off of House of Balloons. Yeah, I think I think I gotta go The Morning, but After Hours leaving this early is definitely a travesty. It's tough. And for that reason, I, I'm pretty split. So I'm gonna agree with you. That's why you're went? I don't wanna start nothing. You wouldn't have to, it wouldn't be starting anything. Grant, what would you have picked? After hours. Yeah, I mean, hmm. I'm going the morning. I'd rather listen to it. All that money, the, the money, money is the motive. motive. Alone again versus I feel it coming. I feel it coming. I feel it coming. I feel it coming, baby. <laughs> I'm not even playing the bongos here. Where Alone Again builds to, it's just like too big and too emotional. I don't know. I, I like it more than okay. I feel it coming. Alone Again. Oh! Uh, I Can't Feel My Face versus King of the Fall. King of the Fall. Yeah, King of the Fall. Can't Feel My Face is great, but he's got other songs like it. And I don't know, we said it earlier, King of the Fall is that return into a form with the new guy. I changed my mind. Oh. I'm going Can't Feel My Face. I feel like King of the Fall is a return to form. Great song, but it's not as exciting overall as Can't Feel My Face because of the type of song that it was when it happened. It just didn't exist yet. Like he, yeah. he was able to like capture a thing. So I'm gonna toss it to, to Grant. My face. That's fine. Cause I wanted to change my mind too, but I didn't want to be a follower. Right, right. You're not a follower, but you got followers. I don't debt people up anymore. I'm too famous. <laughs> it's disgusting. Joke's on you, buddy. Kind of stuff turns me on. Yeah, I'm gonna put a slap sound in there so it looks like I actually slapped you. Good, you can put a big moan afterwards too. Cause that would have been my reaction if you actually did it. I would have said, oh. You know what I was thinking about yeah. actually as I was listening to this? So The Idol, I know, you know, terrible show, whatever, but I, I watched it. And this is, I guess, somewhat of a spoiler in whatever, it doesn't matter. Lily Rose Depp's character, Jocelyn, when she first works with Tedros, the weekend's character, he r helps her remake one of her songs and then they show it to her label and it has like moans all over it. Like they like kind of like make it while they're banging and it's like pretty awful, but it has like a lot of moans all over it. Something that I noticed when listening back through old weekend Again, songs is like there are a lot of songs where there's moaning all over them and so I think it's like directly a reference to the idea that if he had shown a lot of that music to labels back then they yeah. would have been like oh let's clean it up let's blah 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 yeah. which is funny considering where The weekend is in his career right now where like that seems the furthest from being possible. True. It's not like he hasn't retained some of his edge, especially yeah. lyrically, but like it, it like clicked for me as like, oh, it's no wonder The Weeknd wrote this show mm -hmm. that he wanted to bring in a song with moans all over it. Yeah. He's a moaner too. What do you mean? He moans in the sack. How do you know that? I know people who have slept with him. Well, yeah, I guess he did tell people to tell their friends about it. So the word spreads around, yeah, you know. A lot of people have NDAs and stuff. He doesn't want that. He says, tell your friends about it. Please. Tell them like how I roll and all that sorts of, you know, give a Yelp review of my my house. Off music versus out of time. I'm rooting for Dawn here, but it's going up against tough tracks and loft music wins. Yeah, loft music wins. Maybe as time goes on, out of time will stick as more of a classic because right now it feels a little overplayed to mm -hmm. me. It's kind of everywhere all over the radio, but yeah, loft music's more important. In your eyes versus is there someone else? I'll take Dawn here. I'll take is there someone else? And I will go against Dawn once again and pick in your eyes because there is saxophone all over the second half and it's an amazing <laughs> song. Grant? In your eyes. Okay. Lastly, we've got Hardest to Love versus Earned It. Hardest to Love. Hardest to Love. Earned It's like, 
It's good. Yeah, it's very good. It's not great. And Hardest to Love is pretty great. I agree. So that's a sweet 16 right there. Into our sweet 16. Here we go. Blinding Lights versus Tell Your Friends. Easy for me. Blinding Lights, perfect pop song. Yep. But Tell Your Friends has, it's potent. Yeah, Tell Your Friends is like a, it's like Spring Breakers, you know, the movie. Yeah. And Blinding Lights is like Jurassic Park. You're like, yeah, Jurassic Park's great. It's a harmless movie about dinosaurs. It's a pop movie. Spielberg. <laughs> right. Tell Your Friends is filthy and confusing and has Selena Gomez in it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Wow. Yeah. That really, yeah. It came around. Kind of came you. around full circle. Yeah. That was really Dinosaurs, something. confusing. But the Selena part. Tears in the Rain versus 28. Uh, Tears in the Rain had a good run up until this point, yeah, but 28 run. is going to take it here. Absolutely. And is that 28 grams? Ah, 28 grams makes an ounce. Let's talk about it. Is that an ounce of cocaine? Let's talk about it. Ounce of blow. Ounce of blow. Bulgarian bam bam. That Orlando oyster dust. Tuscaloosa nose ticklers. South American sinus stuffers. Um, Snow Child versus Sacrifice. I might have to turn my back on Snow Child here. Really? No. Okay, I was going to say, that doesn't make any sense, yeah. I feel like. I think Snow Child walks here. Yeah, Snow Child wins. Now we got a House of Balloons matchup here. We've got House of Balloons, Glass Table Girls versus Wicked Games. It's Wicked Games easily for me. Yeah, same here. I mean... It's a hell of a matchup. You love to see an album go against an album, finally. Great matchup, but Wicked Games is borderline unbeatable. What a song. Now we got Kiss Land versus High for this. We might disagree here, but I'm going to keep riding for the balloons and go with the intro to the man. They go low, I go high, Abel. I think... I think the first half of Kissland not being as good as the second half makes me want to choose high for this, but I might like the second half of Kissland so much that I have to take it over it. Yeah, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with Kissland. It's so close though. I'm going high for this. Grant, where do you go? I'll take Kissland. Ah. I did not see Kissland going to the Elite Eight. I'm gonna be honest. The morning versus alone again. Oh, that morning. Is that, you, again, it's hard to tell because you like singing. Yeah. And I you. like singing. And I like when you sing. Thanks. It's hard to know if you're picking the song or if you're just singing it, mm -hmm. you know? And that wasn't even the right words to the song, but I'm just saying. I'm picking it. You're picking it? Yeah. Can I sing something else for you? Yeah, sure. I got oceanfront property in Arizona. It's a George Strait song. Nice. It's called Oceanfront Property. That's cool. Yeah. There's not an ocean in Arizona. Oh, well, there's not. Yeah, that's why it's funny. So he doesn't have oceanfront property. He just has a house in Arizona. Yeah. That is cool. It's a good song. That's clever. I'll show it to you later. Sure. He is a hell of a songwriter. Yeah. And George Strait. Uh -huh. Could do a George Strait bracket right after this, back to back. Sure. And honestly, I would have liked him if he was gay. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. George Gay. Fine with me. <laughs> Doesn't make no difference, honestly. Nope. I'm going to go with The Morning here. Like I said, it's my favorite on balloons. Yes! Alone Again is very good, though, and uh, deserves praise. Mm -hmm. Can't feel my face versus loft music. Put me in that loft and play that music. Absolutely. And when for... you think of loft music, you don't often think of songs by the weekend. You know what I mean? You think of house. elevator music or kind of like, yeah, like chill ass house music and <laughs> shit like that. But uh, when it comes, yeah, this is different. Different song, different type of vibe. You know, uh, The weekend worked with Sam Levinson on The Idol. Sam Levinson's other show, Euphoria. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Right. You know, sometimes I just turn on Max because that's where Ruby. And now we got an after hours matchup. We got In Your Eyes versus Hardest to Love. It's in your eyes for me. Really? That's like a shocking based on your other picks because you've picked a lot of stuff over In Your Eyes and you have picked nothing over Hardest to Love. Yeah. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Just a reminder, Hardest to Love is the drum and bass. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, In Your Eyes is the one with the saxophones at the end. I think In Your Eyes has had a harder run to this point. Hardest to Love has had an easier run. And that kind of explains my previous voting. I'm going to vote Hardest to Love. I think that's a better song than In Your Eyes. But I love both of them. And I'm going to be true to myself and vote for Hardest to Love. Okay, yeah. You yeah. are confused. It's hard to get a grasp on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's hard to track you. you yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. If I had to paint a picture of you and I did it like every day for seven days straight, that's a week, I think every single picture would look different. And that's what's kind of beautiful about you. I'm listening to Margaritaville on my head right now. Really? Yeah. Why, does it, why do you look like that when you're listening to Margaritaville? So how I look when I dance. Hardest to love. <laughs> elite eight. No one calls your eighth birthday that. I know they should. Yeah. Sweet 16. What about your elite eight? <laughs> it's elite eight next year. We got to get him a Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your friends versus 28. Tell your friends for me, Riley. Yeah. I think this is probably the easiest matchup in our elite eight. 28's a great song. Obviously it made it this far, but yes. tell your friends is a special one. All right. Snow child versus wicked games. Wicked games here. And I hate to do it. I love snow child, but I'm going to upset some haters. I think. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm going to go with Wicked Games. I really thought I was going to go with Snow Child, and I thought about it some yeah. more and was like, no, I think I think Wicked Games is better. Can't do that, buddy. 
What's that? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm big. Um, trying to be more touchy feely. You never had a problem with that. You're, if anything, no. I'm glad you picked Wicked Games, buddy. See, I, I think if anything, no. Oh, <laughs> God. No, see, I don't think so. I don't just think trying to so. express myself through the physical touch. I think you might have misunderstood people when they said you need to work on touching people so, right. so much. They, I, mean, I think they meant like you're touching people too much, so maybe don't touch people as much, especially when they don't <laughs> want you to. Like right no. now I'm saying do not touch me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I won't. Yeah. Can I do the salmon thing between your legs? No. Come on! No, come on. No, 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 no. no. And we got Kissland versus The Morning. The Morning. Can Kissland please have its day? Yes, I, you really have a vendetta against this song. I don't. It's just like, it's fine or whatever, but like, it's not as good as other songs. No, I'm going with The Morning. You gotta pay for it with your bati? What's a bati? <laughs> Loft music versus hardest to love. You tell me first. I'm going hardest to love. I'm riding for it. I think it's very marginally better than loft music for me. I love it in like a novel way. I don't love it more than loft music. Like loft music is more quintessential to this catalog. It makes more sense to me. I love hardest to love as the... Continue. Oh, what? You Continue. just mocked me. Mm, I was mocking. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's just like a novel song. <laughs> yeah. I'm going loft music and I hope you choke on your spit. I actually feel like I kind of just like woke up from like a dream or something. I definitely don't like the artist to love more than loft music. Now go back to sleep. Hearts to love, just great rhythm. I don't know. I feel like it's a better song than loft music. Booyaka! Loft music is way, way more edge. He's got that nasally voice that I was talking about. Yeah. He says he's only fucking 20. <laughs> I've been the hardest to love. I feel like my, myself, I've been the hardest to love sometimes. That's why I relate to this. Hey, wake song. back up, buddy. <laughs> Loft music, it is. For sure. All right. Do you believe in hypnosis? No. Okay, good. Final four is here. First, we've got Tell Your Friends versus Wicked Games. I think we'll disagree here, and that's fine, because we are two different people. Okay. I like Tell Your Friends the most. And I don't know why you think I'd disagree. I like Tell Your Friends more than Wicked Games as well. Tell Your Friends is just such a like moment in his career where he's just gotten to a certain level of success. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it just is very illustrative of The weekend as an artist. It's I think perfect. you can see like both worlds of The weekend kind of like start and end with this song. Like yeah. you, you see all of what he was before and where he's going. And this is like a very clear moment of like, this is who this artist is. Yeah, I think know? it's like his most well-written song. The Morning versus Loft Music. Now you know where I'm going because I have said that The Morning is my favorite on House of Balloons. Yeah, I hate to that I have no contest here. It's The Morning for me too. And I will say I did see this coming. Like really? going into this, these are my two favorite The Weeknd songs. I can honestly say going into this, I didn't have a favorite and now I do. And I will reveal it. After we put this poll up in the chat right now, there you for go. everyone to vote, before we go in and make our final decision, we're gonna pop a poll up in the chat, these two songs, y'all vote, and if your favorite song didn't make it to that poll, holla at us in the comments. I don't like how I said that. Yeah, you said holla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll try it again. Yeah, sure. Um, and if your favorite The Weeknd song didn't make it to this poll right here, which is in the, in the chat, Holla, holler, at, what, what holler at us down in the comments, okay. players. <laughs> what? What? You ended it with players. Ah! You didn't need to say players, yeah. I missed out, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah, almost. If your favorite weekend song didn't make it to this poll right here in the chat, let us know what it is. What's up? <laughs> Every good girl needs a little love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't Something's know. off. I have my pick. Me too. Do I have my pick? I'm going to tell your friends. <laughs> Blazed right to the finish for me, and I'd like it to take on the trophy. I think I agree with you. I think I go tell your friends as well. I think it really is my favorite song by the weekend. Wow. It's the tightest, it's bulletproof. Grant, what would you have picked? I would have stayed with you guys. Nice. Thank you for standing with us. Tell your friends wins the weekend bracket. Yes! Once again, let us know what your favorite weekend song is down in the comments and let us know what songs we missed that weren't in that 64. It was very tough to choose what yeah. made it. You know, shout out Professional, XO the Host, True Colors. There's a bunch of great songs that didn't make it. We're now both big fans of the weekend. He's the biggest artist in the world for pretty good reason. Other than that, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more, all that stuff that I said at the beginning. And Graydon, go ahead and leave these wonderful people with some advice to leave or live their lives by. Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor strengthens the body. All right, this has been High Mind TV, love. We appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, Larry. That's my dad. Your dad's gonna go to watch this one? Yeah, he <laughs> loves the weekend. Nice. Bye, Larry.
James Weaver. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that cool? <laughs> Get him. What the? All right, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Adjust my dick. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I'll always <laughs> let you. That's never going to change. You know? <laughs> if you need to adjust your dick, you go ahead, buddy. Thanks, man. You know what? No matter what, that's unconditional. I get worried in this country. Yeah, sometimes you don't know. A man can't adjust his dick anymore. <laughs> it's one of those freedoms that I am worried about going away. He's got to let it stick to his thigh. <laughs> yeah, He can't on. jostle it around, it, loosen it up. What if it starts to kind of point downwards on top of, like, in the middle of the balls, you know? What if your underwear's tight and it starts to go in? Right. And if you let it do that for too long, it'll stay there, or and, so I've heard. Or you have to have your coach pick you up by your jock strap and drop you onto the ground, and then mm -hmm. it'll pop out. You call your girlfriend coach, too? <laughs> <laughs> Coach, where are you trying to eat tonight? I don't know, Weaver. Me, I call my girlfriend first class. Ah, oh, nice. You know what I mean? Girl, you wanted to be famous, but I'm so glad we're acquainted. Like, yeah. Like, don't, like, you're not my girlfriend or anything, mm -hmm. but, like, I'm glad we got acquainted. I'm glad we smashed parts together. <laughs> <laughs> oh.